Our next presenter is from HiBite. He is John Harrington, Chief Product Officer. He's going to explain how data ops, uh, how a data ops approach to people, process, and technology can help biopharmaceutical manufacturers scale from Pharma 4.0 use cases across the enterprise and why data contextualization and orchestration are critical components of a data ops solution. And he's gonna share with us a case study uh, of a client they had, Catalent. So very exciting stuff. Welcome, John. So thank you very much for uh, inviting us to this event. And I think it's actually really fitting that I'm following on uh, Waters and Millipore because they talked about excellent solutions for data within uh, the lab and within the uh, manufacturing facility of a biopharmaceutical. And what I'm gonna talk about is how to leverage that data outside of the lab and how to get access to it and how to do that at scale. And as, as Perry said, I'm gonna talk about Catalent and how they were able to scale their digital trans transformation by leveraging uh, Highbyte's uh, software solutions and a unified namespace architecture. So a little bit about Highbyte. Um, Highbyte is, is a software company uh, focused on helping manufacturers scale their digital transformation uh, initiatives by leveraging data and by leveraging um, data ops or uh, industrial data ops uh, solutions to do that and disciplines to do that. Uh, Highbyte has many customers in the pharmaceutical and um, medical device industry, but we also have many customers across the wide range of manufacturing. So we've found the technology and the solutions very applicable, anyone from automotive to uh, oil and gas and power and utilities. So really wide range of customer base, but we definitely have a lot of customers in pharmaceutical and, and providing a lot of value to them. The first step is to think about, you know, I talked about industrial data ops and, you know, what is industrial data ops? And, and some people may not be familiar with the term. Um, industrial data ops is the term that industry is applying to what has become really the discipline of data. It's establishing a discipline, it's establishing a series of processes, a team technology set around the delivery and the curation of data so that we can accelerate our projects and so that we can effectively manage and secure that data, which is becoming more and more important. Um, what, what we found over time and what is widely reported is that most digital transformation projects fail because of the cost and the delays of accessing data. And the challenge is not just getting the data, it's automating that and doing that at scale, both within a single facility and then across multiple facilities. And how do we do that effectively and efficiently? So, you know, it's it's critical to be able to do this and industrial data ops is all about setting up that discipline. Now, Highbyte as a company provides a technology solution to uh, perform industrial data ops. Um, a lot of times with data today, we're trying to extract the data out of the OT domain, out of the lab, out of the factory floor, and move it up into maybe the cloud so that we can have our data science team perform analytics on it, leveraging AI, leveraging uh, all the different data technologies and visualization capabilities that are in the cloud, being able to do that across multiple sites. And so, you know, the key piece of integrating those systems is first we need to be able to span both the OT and the IT and be able to collect data from the OT domain, the machinery, the bio uh, reactors, the lab equipment that we just heard about from Waters and from Millipore, collect that data, bring it in, um, transform that and contextualize it, standardize it, and then move that up to wherever this data is being needed, whoever the the person is that needs it, the system that needs it, being able to do that efficiently and at scale. So that challenge is not only a connectivity challenge, but it's a data 
uh, standardization and uh, transformation challenge, and it really requires a data engineering platform. So at its core, Intelligence Hub is an engineering platform that enables you to create pipelines of data. But really, when you think about creating those pipelines of data, you need to start with the use case. So, you know, there was a question earlier, can we use that data for predictive maintenance? There, you know, there's a discussion earlier about can we use this data for quality? How do we drive quality? Well, if you understand the use case of the data, then you can understand the system that it needs to be delivered to. You can understand who the persona is that needs it and how we contextualize it as well as the frequency. And that's where you start when you start working with the intelligence hub. We lay that, that information out, understand that, and then we start collecting the data and defining how we need to transform it in order to deliver it effectively to the target system, whether that system is in the cloud or in an on-prem system um, so that you, or to a customer in some cases. So one of the key parts of um, data management and a key trend that's been uh, kind of uh, growing a lot over the last five years is unified namespace and specifically an industrial unified namespace. Now, unified namespace is a pretty simple term. It's just saying we're gonna unify the namespace of a system. But when you put it in practice, it can be extremely powerful and um, take a little bit of work to put it together. So let's talk about what it means in a manufacturing or an industrial uh, standpoint. First thing, like I said, we identify the use case. Maybe we wanna collect some data on a conveyor system. Well, we publish that data into a single common system that then people can, various applications can get access to that data. So here you can get access to the storage of the data, or maybe you have a visualization application, a dashboard that you're using, or maybe you've got an analytics application that needs access to that data. Well, the real power of this is when you start thinking about all the different sets of data, we had talked about, you know, you have a conveyor, but you also have a motor on that conveyor. Maybe you need to do asset maintenance analysis on the motor. You also want to do things like look at the performance of a line and maybe even look at the site and certain cost metrics. So the idea is if you publish all this data into a single uh, system and then lots of other systems can subscribe to that, then you create this unified namespace and what you can do is very rapidly scale out access to data so that the business teams can make use of that data. Now the whole focus here is how do we standardize the data to get it in and make sure that it's standardized and normalized so that we can accelerate the access to the data and bring the data to the people that need it. So now I wanna talk about Catalan. The building blocks that Catalan used were the Hybrid Intelligence Hub and a unified namespace. And Catalan, as, as many people hopefully know, is a CDMO. They're a, a contract development and manufacturing organization. <clears throat> so they produce biologics for their customers. Now they had a challenge, which was a lot of their data collection was very manual. Um, <clears throat> and the data was only accessible to the people on the factory floor. And so by being manual, <clears throat> the resolution was very low not only was it low, but it had the potential for errors to be uh, put in it. So the challenge that they had was how do we automate the collection of this? How do we increase the frequency of collection so that we can get the data resolution that we need? And then how do we deliver that data in a standardized way to our business users, the business people that need access to that data to make decisions, whether they're scientists or whether they're people focused on quality or people focused on maintenance, or sustainability or whatever the use case. So to do this, Catalan has implemented the Highbound Intelligence Hub to collect that data from the different systems. Pull that data in, whether it's the, the bioreactors, many, they have many different bioreactors within a single facility. Some of those were bought, purchased at different times. Some of those were purchased from different vendors. And the key is how do I standardize that data so that when I land it in, 
in their case, their UNS was being built up and housed in their Hive uh, MQTT broker. So they, we needed to standardize those data sets with semantic models and land it in that organized way in the broker so that people could easily get access to it. But they also wanted to combine that data with information from their SCADA, from their LIMS system, from other databases that they have, as well as other equipment that they had on the factory floor so that they could start to look at correlations and they could start to look at what was impacting uh, what. The, the main focus of these projects were how do we improve the yield of our bioreactors and how do we store and leverage data and provide data to our customers. <clears throat> so what Catalan found was that by using the Hybrid Intelligence Hub and publishing that data into a unified namespace, then providing access both to their internal users as well as being able to move that data to, to their customers, they're really able, number one, they were able to automate the collection and contextualization of the data. They were able to do it with very few people. So they had a small team of OT and IT that were really working part-time on this project, collect the data. It's very fast, it's very efficient to collect that data and make it accessible. Consolidate it and have a single platform for managing those integrations. Because again, you know, they don't have ton, big massive IT teams. They needed to be able to do this very efficiently. And really, they were driving to optimize their own output and throughput of the, of the uh, labs and of the bioreactors and the, the production of product, but also give them rich data sets that they could also share with their customers um, to enable their customers you know, to understand what's going on, to track the progress, and have the traceability that they needed. So with that, I'm going to pause. I'm going to take questions. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to highlight, if you're looking for more information on HiBite, uh, we have uh, our website has lots of, of content on it. We also have a YouTube page with videos where you can see not only uh, the product, but also um, various presentations that we've done. And then, of course, on LinkedIn, you can connect with me or connect with the company with HiBite, and you'll get lots of updates. So Perry, I'll take any questions now. Well, thanks, John. Really valuable case study. Really, really interesting stuff. Everything's building on itself throughout these presentations. It's really it is. good. It's been fascinating. Uh, to so, watch it. Um, so some questions. Um, so I'm thinking of the the very first conversations you have with a client. Uh, who is going through digital transformation, building out their data architecture. All right, how do you help them? Like what, what questions should they have and what, what questions should they be prepared to answer that you will have? Yeah, we often start with asking them what their initiatives are and what they're trying to solve for. Um, the focus is really, we need to solve problems. <clears throat> A problem is not, I need to just land this data in Snowflake, or I need to land this data in Azure or AWS. A problem is, I need to inc improve the uh, throughput, or I need to improve the output of this bioreactor. And in order to do that, I need access to information. And those are the sort of problems that, uh, that we often try and dig in on, because having that really specific problem enables you to then solve it uh, get quick wins, and then make that repeatable. But then we also often talk with them about what's the future vision. So, so there's some level of really specific what challenges are you having as well as what's the future vision. And, and pulling those two things together um, is generally where we start. Uh, okay, so we have... We have maybe a couple minutes left. Um, yep. This is another really good question. So uh, the, probably the most important piece of advice, the single most important piece of advice for, for a pharmaceutical manufacturer, they're looking to, looking to scale out their data architecture. Uh, they need to maintain some agility. And I'm thinking of CDMOs like Catalan. Yeah. Um, so they need agility. 
and then let's add in a regulatory layer on top of that. So what would be the, the most important single piece of advice for them? Yeah, I think um, you're right. You need to maintain agility, but you also need to put out quality product, right? And quality product means quality data collection and quality controls. Um, <clears throat> one thing that we, we have some customers who, um, who are thinking about, you know, we can keep our, um, our validated systems in place for the controls and of the process. But we can pull the data out of those systems, whether it's the sensors or the, the, uh, the react bioreactors or the, uh, the MES system or LIM system, we can pull that data out and provide it. In many cases, they're moving it to the cloud. They may be moving it to Snowflake or Amazon and provide it to our scientists to start doing analysis on. Then once those people learn something, they can go back in and they can look at the, the validated systems again and they can make adjustments as needed or whatnot. But you can, do, you can separate those two and the technology has gotten to a point where it's, it's relatively simple to separate those two and have your validated systems uh, feeding data into your things like um, your, your uh, maintenance systems or your quality systems or the AI that people are trying to produce. <clears throat> so that's, that's the first thing that, you know, that often gives you that agility while also maintaining those validated systems to make sure that you have very high quality uh, control of your processes. Well, thanks, John. Great presentation and really interesting uh, capabilities that you demonstrated here. Um, and, uh, and, and you help demystify data ops a bit too. So thank you for that. Uh, John Harrington from Highbyte. Thanks for being with us today.